What is up, YouTube people? I have a, uh, another video for you guys today. Um, I'm thinking about basically doing a series of the things that I have learned through being sober and how that has kind of transcended into my my day-to-day -day life and kind of like expand on certain topics. So um, obviously all of this is subjective. This is everything that I have learned and hopefully something that I tell you will, will kind of help you in your own life. Today I would like to talk about procrastination um, and how that kind of like has to do with, with drinking as well and what that means if you decide to stop drinking and how you need to um, learn how to, how to deal with procrastination as well. For me, um, I have always kind of been a procrastinator. Uh, even in high school, I was always the kind of person that would get the assignment, wait till the night before, and then just crank it out. Um, by doing this repeatedly and getting the grades that I needed to to move forward, I realized that it was an option. I was always able to do it, um, therefore I didn't see a reason to try to stop that trend. Um, I would just go ahead and enjoy myself knowing in putting that off the entire time knowing that at some point I would have to get to it and then cramming it all in at the end um, and I would have a lot of stress from that you know but ultimately I accomplished uh, the goal that I needed to do <clears throat> when I became uh, 18 I ended up winning uh, the television game show Wipeout so in the first season last episode I had a big mohawk and I won $51,000 and I thought it was like the coolest thing ever. Like me and all my buddies were gonna party and, and have a lot of fun. This is right before I was about to go. I had already actually taken, I think, a class or two at the community college in Pasadena. Um, but once I got that money, I was just like, forget that, I'll, I'll deal with that stuff later. And so I procrastinated. I pushed that off and I decided to party. Um, people told me to put some money aside for the taxes. I didn't do that. Um, I, once again, I, I just kept pushing everything off, thinking that I'll figure it out later. I'll figure it out later. I'll figure it out later. That I, I didn't realize at the time, but that repetition ended up becoming a part of my personality. It becomes part of the fabric that makes you who you are. Your repetitive behaviors are, are you, they're your actions. And if you're doing something that is negatively affecting your life, it will, and, and consistently, it's just going to be a, par a part of you now, you know. Um, so with, with drinking, I, you know, I started drinking quite a bit. And drinking was the ultimate procrastination. It allowed me to be happy in the moment. And it's kind of like the saying, leave your worries at the door. They're not going anywhere. Um, that's supposed to be for the bar. But basically, that's what my drinking was like for my entire life. I left my worries, you know, off to the side while I drank and I drank all the time. And so everything kept getting pushed to the side. Uh, after I had won that show, I spent all the money within like six months. And about a year or so later, the IRS called me and they were wondering where the taxes were. And I told them I had spent it all. And they were like, well, that doesn't mean that you don't owe those taxes. And so that burden weighed really heavily on me. I was like, I, I owe now like $14,000. I don't have that kind of money. Um, and I kept pushing it off, pushing it off. And finally they said, look, we're going to seize your stuff, your assets, your little bit of money you have in your bank account. We're going to take all that from you if you don't set up some form of payment plan. So I went in there and I set up a payment plan and it was pretty simple. It was 250 a month to, to state, 250 to the federal government. Um, and you know, I worked in the restaurant industry, I think as a host at the time, um, and I was able to make those payments. But it, the, the weight that was lifted when I, when I finally did it, and I realized that I was like, oh my God, that's, I'm so glad that's, it's, it's over with. And then you realize it wasn't even anywhere near as bad as you thought it was gonna be, you know? So flash, uh, fast forward to years and years of me drinking and pushing things off um, and you know, Furthering my career in the restaurant industry, I, you know, I became a, a busser and then a back waiter and then a server and then a server bartender. And so I was making much better money. Um, but ultimately, I, I still didn't really have any direction. And I kept putting it off, putting it off, putting it off. And 
at, I would wake up and think, oh, I'm going to do all these things today, but let me have a beer first and, you know, and kind of warm up to the day. And that beer would turn into two, turn into four, and then I'd put all my responsibilities on the next day, right? And so it just became this pattern of always shoving my responsibilities further and further back. And they got larger and larger and larger. And sometimes it just got to the point where I would just drop some of those responsibilities. And you have this kind of like this perception of how you think people view you. Um, and then there's how people really view you and really think of you. So I thought people still, you know, liked me and thought I was kind of trustworthy and reliable, funny enough. Um, in turn, after, you know, being sober and talking to people, it wasn't that people like actively hated me, but they didn't put a whole lot of faith in, in my ability to, to get things done, you know? And I mean, if I said I was going to help you move, most likely I'd probably show up, but in my mind, it was always an option to call and make something up. Um, and that kind of, the procrastination also tied in a lot to my pathological lying. So if I didn't want to go to work that day, I would say I slipped and I, and I really fucked up my ankle and this actually happened, you know, and I, I basically, I went to uh, one of the local breweries and I had a beer, two beers, three, and then like, I was up to like my fifth beer and I'm like, fuck, I can't go to work. I'm wasted. So I made up this ruse that like I hurt my foot, my ankle and I couldn't make it in and they had to scramble to cover for me, you know, and then the next day when I decided to go in, I had a limp all night, right? And I kept forgetting what foot I was supposed to be limping on. And they were saying, what, what foot did you hurt? And I was like, oh, it was my left one. I slipped off this curb. It was some weird accident. But then throughout the night, they'd catch me either not limping or limping on the wrong leg. Um, and it just, you know, those, those things, you think that like, oh, okay, well, they probably don't care that much. But now being in this position of being sober, knowing if someone were to have like kind of thrown everyone under the bus the night before, because they just wanted to drink and then you show up and you realize it was, you know, it was just all for bullshit. Like those things really stick with, with a person, you know, and they really change how, how they, they view you. Um, and through, you know, drinking you, there's a lot of self justification. Um, so much so that it's, it's crazy to other people, you know, like it only makes sense in your head because a lot of it is internalized. You don't share all that with other people, but all that, uh, f from the outside looking in, people would go, you're, you're out of your mind to think that this is okay. You know? Um, so kind of getting to more of what I wanted to talk to you about procrastination besides uh, the obvious uh, negative part of it is now, um, being sober, you know, I wake up and I have this set of things that I want to do and I want to accomplish and I go out and then I do them and then you immediately feel better for doing them. You know, um, not necessarily like a high or anything, but you, uh, you do kind of have this euphoria of like, damn, like I'm, I'm making it happen. And it, it starts with small goals, like put the laundry away, you know, uh, mail that thing that's been sitting on your desk forever, call your dad, you know, whatever it is. Once you do those little things, you start running out of the little things to do, um, or they just become very uh, easy and just kind of part of your day. You don't even really think about them. So then you kind of start expanding, uh, the things that you have to get done. Like maybe like fix your car or start that project, or maybe really like enroll in that class. And as you expand that further and further out, you start realizing that you're taking on life like that. You're, you're doing the thing that you've been afraid of this entire time. Um, you don't stop drinking and then immediately go and do the thing that you've always dreamed of doing. It's, it's incremental and it's baby steps, you know, but about a year and a half now later, since I've stopped drinking, you know, I still have people ask me like, isn't it nerve wracking to go up and like host the trivia or do these kind of things? Like these things that I put myself out there for. And, um, you would think that it, it takes a lot of like self-confidence and courage. Um, and in a way, I guess, uh, you can say it does, but it's, there's been a very linear path to get there. You know, so people just see the finished product, you know, so it, I mean, it's kind of like fitness, you know, people just go like, wow, like that you, you look like you're in really good shape and you're like, yeah, well, like I started here, you know, and then just consistently day by day, this just keeps going. And that's how, you know, I can, I can try to impart that to other people when they see what I have. I'm like, this is so attainable for anyone. It just takes time and 
dedication, you know, the will to want to do that. Um, so you, you realize that procrastination really is one of the, the biggest mental weights that you can, you can have in your life. So what I would implore you to really try to start doing is just do it. Whatever it is that you have to do, just do it. Don't even think about it. Just go do it. You know, what else are you going to do if you're not going to do it? Are you just going to be stagnant and sit around? Like, then you might as well just go do it, you know? Nine times out of ten, it doesn't take that long. And you're going to feel better that you did it anyway. And then once you already kind of have that momentum, it's like cleaning your house. Rarely do you just think, oh, i got to get to the dishes. And then you just wash the dishes and then go sit back on the couch. Most of the time, you wash your dishes and you wipe down the counter and then maybe you wipe down the bathroom counter and then you're like, I might as well vacuum. And you get some momentum and the next thing you know, you've cleaned your whole place, you know. So it's kind of like that where, you know, you do a couple errands and then you're like, what else can I fill this day with? And then you wake up the next day being like, yesterday was such a good day and then days and weeks and months. Next thing you know, you're just one productive motherfucker. You just get stuff done and it feels good to get those things done. And then by having that being part of your repetitive pattern, that's just now who you are. You, you change, you know, like, and when you stop drinking, you have to make a change. That's your big change right there. But you, you can't imagine yourself just stopping drinking and then being the exact same person you were just without booze. Like, because booze has made you the way you are. And now without booze, you're going to be a different person you know, and a much better person. So, um, I guess the moral of all of this is when you have the urge to procrastinate, I implore you, don't just do it. Don't think about it. Just do it. Like jumping into a pool. Don't overthink it. Just fucking go ahead and do it. I promise you, you'll, you'll be happier and you'll start developing a pattern and the little things turn into medium sized things, turn into big things. And next thing you know, you're looking back a couple years later and going, holy shit, I've been sober for a couple years. I've accomplished all this stuff. And what you've accomplished in this amount of time shadows completely, entirely what you've done in your entire drinking career. So, um, like I always say, all you got to do is stop drinking. It gets better. Um, You'll enjoy your life a whole lot more. Um, and, And don't procrastinate. Don't wait. Because... Um, if these fires have taught me anything, man, uh, I'm in Sonoma County. Had to go. Oh, that's my girlfriend. Um, hold on. I'm going to wrap this up. Um, is that life is really short and before you know it, everything can be gone. So just leave it, leave it. Oh my gosh. Live each day. Um, enjoy your life. Don't procrastinate. Um, and stop drinking if you got to stop drinking. Love you guys. I'm out.